Hi, my name's Lou, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made these clots. So I made them without a pattern, so I drafted the pattern myself. And I'm going to be showing you how I did all the details, like the pockets and the fly, everything. So stick around and I hope you enjoy. So you're going to need some measurements. So the first measurement that you're going to need is around your waist. And I'm wearing these high-waisted jeans and this is exactly where I want my waist to lie to fall. And I'm going to take a measurement there. And it's really good to have a marker of how high you've measured. So either um, measure where a pair of trousers falls or wear a belt or even just tie a piece of string around your waist. And then, because the next thing we need to do is to measure your hip. So you want the widest part of you. You also want to measure how far away that is from your waist. So the next measurement that you need is from your waist down to your crotch. Uh, you don't need to go underneath, just, just vertically is absolutely fine. And that's going to help us get the right measurement to avoid the dreaded camel toe. Then the last measurement is the length that you want your collots to be. And if you're measuring this by yourself, the easiest way to do that is to put the, uh, the zero down at the bottom and then hold the, uh, the tape at your waist and then you can read the numbers off at your waist. And that's it, four measurements. That's all we need, ready to go. So I have these books for pattern cutting and they're kind of like recipe books for clothes. They start out with um, basic recipes for making skirts and trousers and then show you how to make all of the variations, you know, how to put plackets and buttons and all of that kind of stuff on and uh, just how to create the patterns for all of those things. So I've used this to help me uh, today but I, a lot of it I just I worked out myself. Um, but the basic difference between collots and, and trousers is that with collots you start out with a skirt block like this one. So we've got a front of a skirt and a back of a skirt and then some darts around the waistline to, to bring it in around the waist. And then you just add on a panel uh, that um, in the centre front that uh, that will join together under your legs. Um, trousers, you'd start with trouser block and then if you wanted to make them wide legged then you just increase the the, size, the amount of fabric you've got in the in the legs. But uh, because I'm going to make collots today I'm going to start out with uh, making a skirt block. To start with I'm drawing a rectangle and the width of the rectangle is half of the hip measure you make you made plus a little bit of ease about a centimeter and a half will be fine so make a mark for the waist a little bit down from the top and then I measure down from there the distance between the waist and the hip and I'll put a line across which is the hip line and now we're going to split this into two one half is going to be the back and one half is going to be the front and you put all of the ease that you added in, so that one and a half centimetres, you put it into the back. Uh, so you take a quarter of your hip measurement and then add all of that ease, that one and a half centimetres in. And so you've got one half of this rectangle that's going to be the back of the skirt block and then one half is going to be the front. Now we draw the waistline in. So you uh, quarter your waist measurement and then add a little bit of ease into it because you want to spread out that waist um, pretty much along the length. So we're going to add four centimetres in, two centimetres for each of a dart that we're going to put into the waist. And we're going to put them in at a third and two thirds of the way across. And we're also going to raise the, uh, the waist measurement up by one and a half centimetres and just draw a nice smooth curve. So that, uh, yeah, so that on the back we've got uh, a smooth curve upwards to the side, a curve downwards to the sideline, and then we're going to add in two darts, uh, the one closer to the centre being a little bit longer at about 14 centimetres, and then the one closer to the side being about maybe about 12. So you should end up with the back of the skirt with two darts in it, and then we're going to move on to the front of the skirt.
um, again take that quarter of the waist measurement and add in two centimeters which is going to be your dart in the front um, and again raise the side up by about a centimeter and a half and this time we're going to put in one dart and we're going to put it in like a third of the way uh, from the side this one's going to be a little bit shorter maybe about 10 centimeters I've used a fairly thick card for this uh, pattern because I want to be able to cut it out and save it and use it on future projects. So that's what I've done and I'm cutting out the darts here and then for the front of the skirt block I'm going to cut down from the dart uh, down to the hem of the, of the skirt and that's going to give me some space to put some gathers in later. So we're going to trace our pattern pieces onto another uh, piece of paper now and this is going to make our collot pattern. So we're going to start uh, a little way in and that distance is a quarter of your hip measurement plus a couple of centimetres for the back uh, and that's going to give us the extra panel, that, the extra bit that goes between your legs. And of course that doesn't go right up to the top so you need to measure down from the waist down to uh, your body rise measurement plus about a centimetre and that will give you uh, a little bit of ease and then uh, square across from there but you want that to be a nice rounded curve so you measure in about three centimetres on the back and uh, draw a nice curve that, that joins those two straight lines through that point about three centimetres in. For the front we're going to do the same except the panel that we're going to add on to the centre front is going to be a quarter of your hip measurement minus those two centimetres of ease that you put in on the back. This front part of the pattern I've split at the top and then uh, splayed out and I've joined it together at the, at, it's kind of above the knee where it's, it's going to join together. and. Um, I've done this so that there'll be a lot of extra fabric in the top of the clots, and you want to make a note of how wide that gap is because that's the amount of fabric you want to take into your pleats. And again I'm marking that same body rise plus a centimetre um, and, uh, and then measuring in uh, this time four centimetres from the corner and drawing a curved line to join the two. The fabric that I've got is a 100% linen um, and I know it's going to crease a little bit but I actually want that kind of casual look. I'm pinning the pattern to it and I'm uh, leaving a centimetre and a half all the way around my pattern because this is my seam allowance. I've created the pattern but I haven't put any seam allowance in. So what I'm going to do is take the seam gauge, set it to one and a half centimetres and then for each pattern piece I'm going to go around and mark one and a half centimetres away from the edge of my pattern and that's where I'm going to cut. As well as my pattern pieces I'm going to need a few extra uh, pieces. I'm going to need a waistband so I'm just cutting a rectangle of fabric that's uh, twice the depth of the waistband plus the seam allowance and I'm tracing the front of the culottes to make a pattern for some pockets. I'm going to need to cut out this po pocket pattern four times, two for each pocket. I've also got a couple of little extras that I cut out of some of the spare fabric uh, for the little bits that go around the fly. I'm using some interfacing to strengthen the waistband and the pieces of fabric that I cut for the fly facings. Now I'm measuring where I want my pleats to go in the front of my culottes. Um, I'm just putting uh, some pins in place to mark them and then creating the pleats 
and then I'll just put in a few stitches within the seam allowance to keep them in place while I work on the rest of the collots. I'm pinning one of the pocket pieces right sides together with the front of the collots and I'm going to measure in from the top and measure down and then just put a straight line across uh, for where I want my pocket to sit, making sure that it's big enough to get my hand in. And then I'm going to sew uh, straight down that line. And then I can flip it over, press it, and then I'm just going to put in an extra line of stitching to reinforce uh, the pocket there. So now I'm just going to pin the second pocket piece in place and then sew the two pocket pieces together uh, just where the uh, the pockets would attach and I don't I don't need to worry about sewing up the side seams or the uh, waistband yet. Now I do want to put the darts in the back of the trousers so I've gone back to my skirt block pattern and I'm using that to trace the darts and to mark them in position and I'm just using some pins to mark them and then some uh, tailor's chalk to make sure that I get the lines nice and straight. I'm uh, pinching these into position and then I will stitch them. Now I have an overlocker or a serger and I'm using this to finish off the areas where there would be exposed seams on the inside of the collots. Uh, if you don't have one then you could do this with a zigzag stitch or you could use some pinking shears. I'm pinning and stitching the, uh, the two back pieces together down that central back seam and then that will be the back all finished and then I'm just going to work on the front and then I can join the two together. Now I'm going to do the fly and that's the tricky bit. So I've got two pieces here. This is the fly guard. It's, um, it's been interfaced and I've just put a little line of stitching in here and I'm going to give this a trim and turn it through. Just trim right into the corner there. And then I'm going to um, finish this edge with uh, the overlocker. I've got this piece here which is also interfaced and um, this is the fly facing. So these two pieces here are the fronts of my uh, collot and the zip is going to go down here and then I'm going to attach a waistband on the top there. So the way that the zip needs to go in is that uh, it attaches to the facing which is going to go on here and then we fold this over and we need this has got a one and a half centimeter seam allowance but I want to fold it a little bit less than that and sew that in there um, making sure that we've left one and a half centimeters at the top for the waistband to go in yeah so I'm going to stitch this onto the the fly guard and then the zip goes in here with the teeth facing outwards and then this gets folded over and stitched in place there and then so this is the bit that stops the uh, the teeth of your zip um, getting caught up in your underwear and then this bit sits on top and this bit gets attached to the other side like this and we're going to sew them right sides together and that goes on there and it folds over and then that gets sewn on there. So we're going to need a little overlap here. So this is why we've, uh, we're not going to stitch this at one and a half centimetres so that we can have this stitched at one and a half centimetres and just overlapping by about half a centimetre. And, uh, and that way we've got our zip sandwiched in between these two and we are going to sew 
the zip to this bit of facing here and stitch that on there and then um, and then put a line of when it's all sewn together put a line of top stitching around here which is going to stop it flapping around now that seems a little complicated but we're just going to take it step by step and take it very slowly and we should get there so I'm going to stitch the zip onto the, uh, the fly guard and the fly facing onto the, uh, the front of the collots. So these bits are now stitched and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, on, the, on this side of the, the collot, I'm going to press this edge in uh, by a centimetre and I'm going to line that up there and stitch, pin and stitch down this edge here. And then for this one, for this side, I'm going to fold this over, uh, press this flat and then stitch very close to this seam line just to keep everything uh, nice and, and folded away from the front and that will make this uh, a very neat um, seam on the front there. Now it's time to sew the two front pieces together. So we're going to match up here. Pin there. And we're going to sew up until here. And you want to stop sewing um, just below the bottom of the zip. So I've sewn these two pieces together up to that point there. So I just passed where the uh, the facing is, and uh, then this is what it looks like. You open it out. You can see you've got one half of the uh, zip attached in there. This isn't attached yet, but um, when it uh, folds over there, it should not lie nice and flat and you shouldn't see the zip at all. The zip is in this bit here. What I need to do now is I need to pin this so I'm happy with the way that it lies. So there's a nice overlap there and it's nice and straight and I'm just going to pin down here. Now I can flip this bit over and what I need to do is I need to, uh, I need to sew the, this bit of the zipper tape onto this bit of the fly facing. So uh, with this all pinned in place I can now pin through these bits just those bits so just the zip and the facing. And now I'm going to go and just sew those two pieces together. And so now having sewed it, this is what the zip looks like in place. And it opens like that. You see one half is attached to the fly guard, the other attached to the fly facing. So now what we need to do is to stop this pulling like this, um, we need to uh, put a line of stitching down here and curve it round and we're going to sew that through this uh, the trouser fabric and through the uh, the fly facing here. So I've pinned the uh, fabric of the trou of the collot 
to the uh, fly facing and I'm going to sew following this line here and then going as far into this seam as I can get. So this is the line of stitching that I've just put in and you can see it from the other side like this. So it just goes around there and follows this line around. Now I'm going to attach this uh, flap at the bottom uh, and I'm going to go over this line of stitching again just to about here and then I'm going to go backwards and forwards and reinforce it. That just stops this um, flapping around um, and just keeps it in place. And this is the front side of the trousers and then we're going to sew right sides together to the, the back starting with the inside seam uh, matching them up where all of the um, all of the seams cross, um, pinning them and sewing them. And with that done, we uh, again with right sides together, match up the side seams starting at the waistband and uh, pinning and st stitching all the way down uh, both of the side seams. Now is a really good time to check the fit and I decided I wanted these taken in a little bit more around the waist. So in order to make that uh, equal all the way round, I took in a couple of darts at the back just by a half a centimetre more and I added in a tiny bit into each of the pleats at the front. I just unpicked those few stitches that I used to hold them in place and then I re-sewed it. I decided I wanted some belt loops, so I cut a narrow strip of material, I uh, folded it in half and then uh, folded each of the halves into the centre, uh, folded it again, pressed it and uh, sewed very close to the edge and then I just cut it into the size I needed for the belt loops. I attached each of these to the, uh, the culottes and I just again put a few stitches in the seam allowance to hold them in place. Now I'm able to attach the waistband and I just want to leave one and a half centimetres um, at each side of that front centre opening and then I'm just pinning it straight all the way around. I've sewn it and then can turn it over and give it a good press. I'm now stitching the belt loops onto the waistband. I've just folded it over and then I'm using a very, very small, close together zigzag stitch and then trimming off the excess. So you fold over right sides together the waistband, so you, you fold it in half and then uh, just uh, stitch through it. And then I make sure everything's folded through and looks really nice and neat. And then I will pin and stitch the inside of the uh, waistband by stitching from the outside. This is called stitching in the ditch. And you stitch in, in the gully uh, of the seam that you've already created and that will keep the inside of the waistband in place and hopefully you shouldn't see any of it from the outside. And now I've just got to pick a button. And I'm using this attachment that came with my machine which is for sewing buttonholes. Uh, you put the button in it and uh, you uh, attach it to the machine's foot and then you select the buttonhole stitch and you press go and it will go and create a, uh, a nice neat buttonhole for you. It's very clever. And use a seam ripper to, uh, to open the hole in the buttonhole and put a pin across the end to make sure that you don't uh, cut through those end stitches. So now I've folded under and pressed the hem and I'm going to use the blind stitch on the machine uh, to finish the hem of the trousers 
Um, you could do this by hand sewing, but I hate hand sewing, so anything to get me out of it. So I'm kind of folding it underneath and uh, pinning it like this, and then this foot from my machine, uh, it's got like um, it's got like a ridge down the middle of it, and you select a stitch on the machine that's like straight for three stitches, and then it kind of jumps, and you position this so the fold that you've made is right where that ridge is in the foot, and then you sew the three straight stitches on the right hand side of that and then it jumps over and uh, sews another stitch on the left and then that creates a, a blind hem with just a tiny little stitch holding the hem in place each all the way around. So I've had these made up now for a couple of weeks and I'm really liking them. I find them quite flattering and um, yeah, they, they're very versatile. So you can wear them quite smart and dressed up and I've got them with these like espadrille heels on and I, I really quite like doing that. But they also look really nice, just kind of relaxed and casual. Um, I've been wearing them for dog walks um, and also for fancy nights out. So they're very versatile. Uh, I think this would be a great pattern if you wanted to do in like a really nice light drapey fabric for a, for an evening do or something like that as well. But what I wanted was a nice pair of casual trousers for summer, so these are just perfect. So thanks for sticking around to the end. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you do make anything like this, I'd love to see. Uh, so yeah, do let me know in the comments down below. And uh, if you like this and you'd like to see more content like this, uh, please do hit the subscribe button. I'd be very grateful. Thanks. Bye.